um, was, was part of an um, creative uh, processes uh, that Karen accompanied uh, three wonderful, rather young people at the time <laughs> uh, through a process that um, that Jose mentioned a photo voice process, but it's more than just a photo voice process. It's part of the transformative process um, um, that really built the confidence, the agency of these young people to be able to speak honestly about sexuality that is often considered as a taboo topics in many places of the world. And even in, in some contexts, it's criminalized and have cultural consequences. Um, first, I would like to introduce myself. I am Fita. I identify myself as a feminist. I, I am based in Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, and in 2019, I worked with an alliance, a network of 20 um, organization work on the sexual reproductive health and rights. Uh, and at that time, we came with the realization that um, you know, sexuality is something that we have to discuss. It's part of our resistance, it's part of our fight, it's, our, it's part of our struggle um, to face the system of many different things that you know, oppress us as a human being. And I think young people are there. Um, they, they have the, the brave, they have the spirit, they have all the, um, all the, uh, all this um, creative energy that can lead us into opening the space where we can talk about sexuality more openly. Um, so, yeah, so here we are. Um, it's very, it's a, such a pleasure to be able to meet them again um, after maybe one year without uh, having a very, you know, like close connections. Um, so here we have, Karen, Angie, and, and Donnie and Ajis. Um, I think, hi everyone. <laughs> so I would like to give a short um, um, introduction to, uh, for, uh, to each of the contribu contributor of the book. Um, so first Karen, we know Karen very well. Uh, she is a psychology practitioner with a background on uh, social psychology and photojournalism. She's uh, very much passionate on gender and mental health issues. And since 2014, she has been running a gallery called Gue Ari Gallery, Indonesia-based photo book gallery, an independent publisher. Um, and she uh, graduated the, um, from, um, with a degree in health, and, uh, health of social psychology. And she is now currently pursuing um, PG certification, if I'm not mistaken, Karen, I'm sorry. Um, therapeutic photography at Robert Garden University, Scotland. Um, yes, that's for Karen. And Angie, um, Angie is actively speak on the issue of gender equality and violence against women. She's also an SRHR educator and counselor in, uh, we call it Taman Belajar Kupang, a youth network in Kupang, East Nusa Tenggara and she is currently the youth coordinator of One Vision Alliance. Um, and next, Ajis, she, uh, he is a designer who has been involved in HIV, reproductive health and sexuality programs. And he's currently in the process of making his own photo book on the issue of reproductive health on, of the street children in, uh, in Samarang, in Central Java. And last but not least is Doni. He is a psychology student and SRHR advocate. Uh, he works uh, hand in hand with uh, Ajis at the um, IPPA Central Java or Indonesian Planned Parenthood Association in Central Java. So there we have these wonderful people. Um, and before I let these wonderful people to share um, their experiences, on working on this project. I would like to also share everyone that this is a safe space. Um, as we mentioned, sexuality is quite um, exciting and sensitive issues at the same time. So um, feel free to share your comments, questions, um, uh, your feedback about the, uh, the project, about the books. Um, during the conversation we have with the speakers, but also if you have any questions, um, 
you can put it on the chat box or maybe you can even speak directly uh, by unmute your mic uh, when the question and answer session is open. I hope that quite clear. So first we are going to well, um, the center of the discussion. So first, Karen, uh, maybe you can explain a bit why therapeutic photography? What is it and why do you think it is important to discuss specifically sensitive issues such as sexuality? And then uh, we would also like to know what was the creative process behind this amazing creation? Uh, and maybe you can also share a bit on what are the challenges and what surprises you along the way in doing this project? Please. Okay, uh, thank you so much for the introduction, Vita. So, hi everyone, uh, I'm Karen. I am the therapeutic photography facilitator for um, that mostly focus on gender and sexual reproductive health issues. So as mentioned by Vita, uh, I have a social psychology and photojournalism background. So I'm interested to intertwine uh, these two things as therapeutic photography. And I found out from Judy Weisers and Neil Gibson, two figures in the area of therapeutic photography. Something is said to be therapeutic if it provides uh, benefits for someone to explore a deeper understanding on who they are, which is done to reduce inner conflicts. And this is useful to increase one's knowledge and welfare and to question social issues like the relationship between cultures and prevailing and injustice. So through this talk, we would like to share to everyone about um, our photo book titled, What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Sexuality. So it is a compilation of uh, visual stories on desire, anxieties, hopes, and experiences regarding uh, reproductive health and sexual experiences narrated by 11 young people. And these young people are the ones with the right to express their opinions freely. And they have control over their bodies, access information on reproduction held comprehensively, or merely to determine their choices autonomously without any discriminations. And this book is the result of therapeutic photography workshops uh, in group setting that also known as Photo Voice, which in 2020, I facilitated to 11 young people in two cities in Indonesia, Kupang and Semarang, in cooperation with the Institute for U Women's Human Rights and with the Indonesian Planned Parenthood Associations in Central Java, and also with One Vision Alliance. So each participant, explores themselves in relation to sexual and reproductive health and rights issues by exploring their feelings, memories, hopes, and emotions that they want to convey that are never separated for, from the influence of their family, environment, religion, and social cultural norms that we know that this is uh, still taboo is, uh, issues to be discussed uh, in several areas in Indonesia. So in a two-day workshop, 11 young people interpreted symbols relating to themselves or those around them as a form of cell representations through interpreting the photos they capture and it is sex uh, related to the issues. So the photos, uh, the selection of the photos, uh, they did uh, independently to present their experiences and anxieties that they want to reveal. So through, photo uh, through photography as a therapeutic medium, it plays uh, each participants in full control, not just in capturing a moment, but from exploring the problems they want to raise and develop the photo ideas that they want to show. And at the end, the picture selections that uh, they had captured. So during the process, there was no judgment. This photo was bad or good because we try to accept and interpret every pictures as we try to embrace ourselves and our feelings so that everyone can comfortably and safely exploring uh, behaviors that are accepted 
are not in society that are inseparable from social, um, religious, and cultural values. So they uh, can clear up uh, anxieties that are difficult to speak out or to divine personal meaningful experiences as a form of uh, self-expression. So this process of interactions between the self and the inner world is what is most important in therapeutic photography as an attempt to self introspections and, or contemplations. So aside from the workshop, I also conducted an online one-on-one -on -one, uh, assistance with each participants to further discuss the photographs they acquired. So it looks like in psychology, we call that counseling. So they can uh, speak up uh, freely about their concerns and their hopes. And yeah, and thanks to the internet, uh, even though it was held in the era of pandemic, the intimate conversations uh, could still be done. So not a few of these young people dig into their archives or family artifacts uh, to hope uh, the remaining memories can be like something to contemplate, uh, to tell the feelings that were left behind or desires that never uh, spoken. So yeah, I think that's the brief introduction from me, uh, Fita. Fita, I think you're on mute, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I just unmuted myself. Thanks a lot, Karen, for sharing us um, the creative processes and of course, uh, really the importance why therapeutic photography. And, and I think um, this is something new, but our, our experience have shown that how powerful it is not only for telling stories to people outside us, but really to check in with ourselves to really part of our healing processes. So um, if the audience have questions to Karen, please keep it, or maybe you can already have um, put on, your, on the chat and we will discuss later after we hear um, the creative processes behind um, the creative minds of contributors of this book. So, some questions to all the young people, <laughs> at least when they were doing these pictures and creating these stories. Uh, as you took part in the um, workshop with Karen, what changed in you? Uh, uh, what do you feel that is different after you participate in the workshop? And also, we will share the, uh, your pictures and stories to the audience. And so maybe you would like to share what was your creative process? Why you finally decided to choose that specific photos? And um, you know what, what was the messages you want to send to those who are seeing those photos and reading the stories? Um, can we have, Ajis uh, first, and then Angie and Doni. Please, Ajis. Okay, thank you, Vita. Uh, what changed me after the workshop? Uh, I started to see things differently on a project that I was working about vandalism, for example. Something like sign, symbol, words, and picture, or scribbles can be message for people who see or read it. Something can be bad thing, but also become a beautiful thing and become very meaningful to others. I came to know that photo can express the feeling of what I see, what I capture. Through a photo, I can talk about what I might not be able to say. Uh, yeah, this project is started with workshop held by Alliance Sabu Viti or One Vision Alliance with Vita and facilitated by Queer Gallery with Karen itself for about one month processing. For the process itself, the theme of the photo project that I choose is a series, a photo that took picture of the graffiti on the wall. We know that gravity is beautiful thing, is a unique thing. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, the gravity that I took is uh, better known as 
vandalism, a little bit known as vandalism in uh, I took in Semarang City is the city that I live. Mm, the question is why the gravity of the, on the wall? For me, the gravity of the wall or vandalism itself is a unique thing, where these this scribbles are a representation representation of the existence of people or teenagers maybe. So they are noticed. Teenagers really like to seek attention in their own way. One of which is one of which is vandalism. The vandalism that I get is unique thing, namely about sexuality. There are scribal word that we see on the slide is uh, the first one with up again. Nah, uh, the word control it means uh, penis in Javanese language, and then down fit again, again. There are a word uh, like kimchi. It means uh, stand for kimpetan chili in Javanese language, or refer to a small vagina, and referring to women who are still young, teenager woman, teenager woman, or teen. And then, tentu, it means fuck in Javanese language. Then we can also see the variety of picture uh, penises. And then the for the narration itself, I give uh, for the, the narration that I give is also a little ticklish criticizing about parents in Indonesia who have not been open to the issue about sexuality and it is still taboo in Indonesia societies today. My part on, on this book is an opening chapter about how difficult it is to be a teenager in Indonesia to talk about sexuality issue openly and to be accepted by other people. To quote my narrative in the last paragraph, instead of scolding them, you should have to share talk and sit down together to be understand them better. Looks like they want to say something to you, sir. Lastly, sexuality should be discussed, not silence. Sexuality should be a natural thing, not taboo. From now on, we should start talking about sexuality freely. Thank you, Vita. Thanks a lot, Ajis. Um, thanks for sharing your, your creative process and really the highlight um, message uh, that I think once things are hidden or hide by those who are in power, there's always ways people to fight back. And this is one way of young people to say that, you know, like we want to know more, like we want to discuss about this and you should give us the space. So thanks for sharing that, Ajis. And Thank again, you if you have that. any questions to Ajis, please put on the chat and maybe you can just speak directly to, to him or once we completed um, everyone's stories. And now, Angie, um, Angie also create a very wonderful stories um, and and please, Angie, tell us what what changed in you, what was the creative process, and what messages you want to share with everyone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kavita, for the time and chance. Um, uh, uh, first, I want to tell a story, a short story about a uh, workshop with Kakaran. Um, uh, Warsaw with Kakaran brings a lot moment of silence. <laughs> I mean, um, when Kakaran uh, usually usually start with question like, uh, "Okay, Angi, what what you see in this photo?" or or uh, "Can you tell me about this photo?" and and then I'm just sit there and will be silence, and so that's. I, I always I always think that that's the good way to start uh, to start to think about uh, the photos I took 
and I love every process of this workshop because it makes me feel like I'm, I'm in the middle of everything. Uh, what I've got in this workshop is I, I learn to know myself and I learn to know what makes me comfortable and uncomfortable and and how I found my love language is a part is a best part <laughs> and my perspective of woman in this patriarchy system and the other one is I found what kind of relationship I always want in my life and so uh, I have I have uh, many photos here but I will I will share uh, like three photos to you guys so uh, if you if you want to see more photos of us you you will can find it in this our book and maybe I will start with the first photo uh, page 120 yes um, okay uh, next. Okay, yeah, oh, it's, oh, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, Kavita. Okay, so this this first photo is, uh, I see this shape is like vagina. Um, for your information that in Kupang language, we say pepe for vagina and tolo for penis. But uh, those words are not often used to describe our reproductive organs, because uh, instead of it, they will think that you say uh, bad words. So they change pepe to peanut and tolo to bird or banana. It's, it's something like that, and and they they still use it until uh, now. Until they they still use it. So uh, we don't we don't have to say pepe or tolo, but we say it's a bird, uh, it's a peanut, it's, it's something just like that. So um, I took this photo is before sunset. Uh, I just I just um, remember that it it is a beautiful moment. Um, I just standing I was standing under under the rock that make this uh, shape like vagina and I I just standing there and oh my god it's, it looks so beautiful and in my heart uh, it's just hangi it's, it's look like vagina. It, my heart just tell me like that. So when Kakeron asked me, what do you see in this photo? And I'm just see Kakeron and Kakeron, I see vagina. That's absolutely a vagina. I, I just say that. And then what I see is, is this uh, um, smaller side to wide open. And then I, then I talk about, it's, it's a discrimination and obsession that people put on women uh, which is how they say a type vagina is better. If it's loose, it won't feel anything. It's something like that. You, uh, if you live in Kupang, you will hear it uh, so often. Uh, I don't know if in Thai will be the same, but I, I don't know. And virginity will uh, will be a common business. If a girl not virgin anymore, then they will say, oh my God, it's a poor man or, the man is less fortunate. It's something like that. They just don't care about what the what the woman feeling, uh, what the woman feel about that unfair situation. They don't feel about that. Uh, they just focus on uh, what men think. It's, it's something like that. And I want to say that in this photo that is biological. Uh, the vagina can lose be because it's elastic and and it's good and it's beautiful and it's very different from penis so uh i just took a moment to realize uh when i talked to kakeran i just took a moment to realize that and i i end my line in this photo wheel uh so girl if someone make a problem about your vagina is tight or not then they don't deserve you it's it's clearly like that and um, so it uh, it is the first photo of mine. Okay, we can move to the next photo. Uh, it's 117. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a photo with uh, hands in corn. 
next. Uh, yes, this is. Thank you, Kak Kafir. Um, uh, this photo, I, I love this photo so much because I, I like the uh, tone of the color in this photo. It's like brown and I love brown. And uh, a little highlight and the dark side is this photo. I love this photo so much. And during the session with Kak Karen, uh, I saw this photo. It's not only about color, but the stories about women. Uh, it feels like my hand uh, wants to explore some part of my body, but women, we are not supposed to sewing what we want or what we like, especially when it comes to sexuality things. A woman has to wait uh, for a man to ask first. It's a common uh, that happen in our society that uh, we can, we must, uh, we can say that we also want it because if you say that, uh, they will, they will, uh, they will say to you that you have bad attitude. It, it's something like that. And this is why there are things like female circumcision. I, I, I don't know what terms in English, but it's sunat perempuan. Uh, maybe Kavita will uh, help me to uh, describe it. But it's it's some treatment to make a woman to press uh, and hide their their desire. Their, the desire in their uh, in their body is, is something like that, and and women we we don't talk about sex. Uh, it's considered something bad. And I was in time when I was so embarrassed to say vagina, the word vagina. I was so embarrassed to say that, and Kakira know it. <laughs> even even that time, I was so embarrassed to say that say this word for Jaina because it's, it's a taboo thing and even I was so embarrassed to touch mine I mean this is part of my body and and this is just the the area then that I uh that not mine is it's something like that and so this story uh the, behind this photo is about freedom I want people to see that this is causing a lot of health problem and how we keep blaming women of course, and also I want to feel free when I talk about vagina, like there should be the same feeling when I'm talking about eyes or hands uh, and not feeling guilty to have this uh, beautiful thing. It's, it's something like that. So this photo is clearly about freedom. And okay, uh, we move to the last photo. It's, It's a photo of both. This page is in the page 100. Yes, yes, that's thank you, Kat. Uh, so this uh, this photo um, is tells about my perspective about relationship. Uh, I feel that sometimes. Uh, I find it difficult to see the difference between love and pain because violence is uh, something, yep. And even though there are two very different things, uh, it's, it's difficult to find that uh, before it. And at the moment, uh, I was, I was uh, standing, uh, just standing like that, and I saw a, a boy kick his girlfriend in front of me. And and I know I was pressing that time, uh, one of the stress response. And so I was just standing and fresh, uh, fresh that time. And it's about uh, five years ago from uh, now. And I also shared my personal story uh, with Kakaran. So I said that I had not been in relationship because of uh, the reason was it, it was violence. I just. I just was scared that day. I just was afraid to be in this circle when it's, it's just so hard to know that to break the circle is, I, I just don't want to be there again. So uh, I tell Kakeran and Kakeran is, is part like counseling to me and thanks to Kakeran, that's, that's very beautiful thing that ever happened to me. So I just figure out that, that it's not stopped there. Uh, I I learned. Um, I 
learn what what uh, if uh, is this uh, traumatic or I just build a self awareness that um, so I I I afraid to build a new relationship like that and but I found I found it uh, healing me heals me and when Kakeron and I talk about this and I figure out the relationship that I want and that's the that's the good part of this workshop and the relationship I want is a uh, relationship that is full of freedom and respect and fair and support each other um, because sometimes we end up losing ourselves when we love someone like these two bots I uh, maybe some of you uh, heard it uh, the quotes that say if you if you are B I'm B uh, it's, it's, it's a quote like that. So I, I put there, um, if you're both, I'm a both. But I don't want relationship like that. I want to, I want to love someone that that's truly, that's the, themselves. It's uh, just, just so me, just so to me. It's, it's something like that. And now it's, it's been almost five years being single, but I always tell myself if, if someday I fall in love and decides to go to death or build a relationship, I believe that he is someone who is kind, he's someone who is caring, he's someone who feels that he has no power over me, but we are equal. We are equal enough to deserve each other. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. I, I mean, it's just love. It's, it's something like that. and and. These three photos is is uh, they they take a big big moment in my heart. Uh, Kakeron helps me so much with these uh, things, and I know that I'm healing that day. I'm healed that day, and uh, I will I will be continue to educate. I will continue to talk to young people about this. Uh, because I, I think that uh, I, I just receive uh, uh, this beautiful thing from Kakeran and I don't know, I don't want to stop uh, in me. I will spread and I will share to other young people. And this is for me. Thank you for the time. Thanks a lot, Angi, for sharing your personal transformations, if I may say. Uh, and, and really that your transformation also contagious um, to other women around you. And, and even for us to hear this process is also very inspiring. Thank you. Um, so Doni, would you like to share what, what changed in you? Uh, and then what was the creative process and the messages you would like to share with everyone? Okay, thank you, Kapita. Hello, guys. Uh, talking about reproduction health in Indonesia, uh, society is not easy and still established. Next picture. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Duni Irwan in Indonesia. Okay. Talking about reproduction health in Indonesian society is not easy and is still taboo. Even among students in the book, when we talk about sexuality, I interviewed four sources about masturbation. Masturbation usually occurred when there is a night of the term of choking. And the SL never even some of the interview said that this time talk about masturbation in rather serious. serious. The reader is just jokes. So, the also about it is a bit steep and can ask for all of the question. Even when taking picture, this I still feel uncomfortable. When I went to take photo of contains body parts, such as be touch and big head. They think that their penis size can be seen from the thumb, the bigger thumb, the bigger there, Mr. P. Next photo. So, uh, next. Okay. 
So there is a treatment regarding which part of the body can be photography by taking several photos. And then showing the photo to their source and the posing with photo to use and with salt be delayed. In the results of the interview, we got several conclusions that actually they really need reproduction health education, but they still assume the likes of reproduction health education. Next photo. Next, please. Okay, thank you. The Get Reproduction Hub Education for Religion Teacher, Science Teacher, or Biological. Even when at school, there is only discussion about wet dreams or masturbation. There has never been a discussion about masturbation. Or masturbation exam, sometimes they are just during the teaching and learning process as being related on purpose. And even then, the teacher is required to discuss if future. In addition, the feeding of present person have never had with dreams at the age of 21 years. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Doni, um, for sh for sharing your your stories. Um, very interesting pictures, and and I I believe that you, I don't know in, in in Hong Kong, but Indonesia, if we put these pictures in public space, um, I, as 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 I mentioned, um, people will still be very shocked, and and even we will get. <laughs> Uh, um, legal consequences. But here are the stories of these wonderful young people, very brave young people who, you know, dare to share the word that um, we are not, we are not, um, we, we resist how the system of different systems that, um, you know, dance together like, you know, religious systems, cultural system, market systems that really oppress us. As a human being, um, oppress our bodies, oppress our minds, oppress our hearts, uh, and we also shared them that you know it, through arts um, we can also fight back. Um, um, so, so thank you for for wonderful people to share. And now um, I would like to open um, the question and answer sessions. So if there is any questions from people who are attending in Zoom or maybe those who are in the venue in Hong Kong, please um, welcome. Um, if not, Karen, uh, I can ask a question while we are waiting for the people. So here in this process, we are discussing how the therapeutic photography can help people to um, discuss very sensitive things to tell messages about something that is very close to their hearts, but also really, like I mentioned, is really a fight against the system. Um, and do you think in the context of, I would like to put in the bigger pictures, like in the context of democracy, for example, um, can these methods be used by those who are you know, feeling oppressed uh, I think this is very much related to what happened in Hong Kong, but also in many places in Asia at the moment. There are so many um, you know, new leadership, political powers that are becoming stronger and really threaten the democracy of, of the region. Okay, uh, thank you, Tita. Yeah, for the photo voice method, um, yeah, we can say it's like uh, triggering someone to speak about that uh, are never spoken. So for like uh, the community that were uh, oppressed or yeah, they, they, it is a method that maybe like for me, uh, it is quite hard to like 
describe something uh, verbally. So I need like photographs uh, to trigger uh, my feelings, my anxiety, my hopes um, to speak about something. So yes, uh, this method is for me is quite effective for me. I mean, um, to capture uh, the opera's community or things that are still taboo to be discussed about. But it depends, um, I mean, I, it, it depends on the situations as well, right? Because when we speak about something, we, we will face the, um, the, like, the situations, uh, our parents, uh, moreover, our, our personal uh, environments uh, that maybe will against us. Um, yeah, that is quite one consequences. I think, but I don't know, like uh, from Doni, Angie, or Ajis, uh, maybe do you, do you face something that uh, against you when you thought about the taboo things in your uh, situations around you? Angie, you want to say, share, respond to what Karen's questions? Um, what against me when I against this taboo thing is uh, people will will uh, people will judge you is is kind of like um, maybe yeah. Angie is not Angie is not a Angie is not a good woman Angie is not a good girl because she, she talks about it she talks about that and and we don't talk about that so uh, if if I talk about that, then I I just turn to a bad woman and bad bad actor in that uh, society. And uh, what what else is 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 against government too and and um, education that that peop, that in uh, in our society is it's like. Uh, what I tell in my first photo, uh, it's Pepe and Tolo. It's, we, we don't say that. We, we, we say that peanut and banana is something like that. And when I came out with Pepe and Tolo, they will, it's, they, they just can't um, accept me when I say that words, because it's a bad word. It's, it's using to, uh, it's using to uh, say something that cruel and things like that. And and it is the same thing when I when I say about vagina when I say it about penis it's something like that it's it's not common here because uh, people will say it's a beard or it's a peanut it's a banana it's not a penis it's not a vagina they they will say so uh, it's it's just a simple thing but it's it's affect the most because it's so hard to uh, to make. Uh, someone uh, being being uh, to make them uh, to encourage them to to say penis or vagina it's, it's a hard thing it's it's a simple uh, thing but it's it's so hard and difficult to uh, encourage them to say that words thanks angi for sharing like we know like we were socialized that this is something bad. And we socialize by so many actors in our life, by our parents, our society, our teachers, even the government just through the state and the regulation told us like, this is something you should not talk. So it's very difficult to fight against those. We need to educate ourselves with something new that is not familiar with us. So I would like to congratulate you to, to be able to, to do that. And I guess you would like to share yourself, um, your, your part of this. Uh, okay. Uh, same like as Angi. In Javanese culture is also, there are words that can be said for a kid and teenage and close uh, that word uh, into speak in the public because there are the cat word. Let me say about control is a bad word about penis 
and then the other uh, word also is a bad word. And then uh, in Indonesia also, uh, the sexuality about LGBT uh, the issue is to, is uh, is a taboo to discuss with other people. There are some uh, close-minded people in Indonesia. Still, very very a lot of them uh, in the government is also a lot of people that close-minded not become as open-minded as us, like which is a uh, part of uh, alliance, uh, vision alliance. It's people there are have uh, open-minded, but in Indonesia there are still very a lot of people who are close-minded about a new information, a new thing, and then. Uh, religion also still have conservative. They should not say that, should not talk about that. And what I see is just that, I think it's that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for sharing, Ajis. There is a question in the chat box from Ryan. Um, there are two questions. Um, first, sorry, I missed out the opening section of the presentation. So Ryan would like to know where um, can Ryan get a copy of this publication? And the second question, will there be a second part of this project? Anyone? <laughs> Maybe okay. Karen. <laughs> yeah, for the first one, uh... Yeah, fortunately, I mean, uh, you can get the copy uh, during the Hong Kong International Photo Festival. Uh, we just uh, have like one copy because uh, we are out of stock. And for the rest is uh, in Indonesian language. Uh, so you can uh, get the copy uh, through Guiari Gallery Instagram. You can direct message us. But for the English versions we just only one copy in uh, during the weekend markets uh in, during this festival yeah uh, and, and the, second the second part is there a second part for this photo page project interesting uh questions uh uh, I'm waiting for that because uh, I also do the research about the photography related to genders and sexual reproductive health. So usually I cooperate with community uh, that um, want to do the photo first projects. So if, but, but it is uh, only in Indonesia. If you're living outside Indonesia, maybe we can collaborate together and um, make workshops about therapeutic photography workshop or photo face project. So yeah, I would love to collaborate and have a partnership with everyone here. Okay, so uh, jumping in, we have a question from um, our something to share from our audience. Yeah, oh, hi, can you hear me? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sitting in front. Um, so uh, thank you for your sharing. I I, I just want to say uh, thanks for the sharing. Uh, the project is very, very meaningful, and I'm very moved by Ivy's uh, uh, sharing a personal of her personal journey um, of uh, self exploration. And I I just want to share with you Hong Kong's situation. I mean, um, actually we're just <laughs> more or less the same. Um, we seem to have a more, more open um, environment. We talk about LGBT eagerly, and we have uh, exciting conversations about queer culture and uh, sexuality and everything. But actually, in day-to-day -day, uh, conversations, in day-to-day -day situations, uh, it's not an easy thing to mention anything about sexuality. I mean, uh, anything about our sexual parts, our body, our own body, about uh, making love about all these things related to uh, your sharing. So I just want to share this and uh, we have more or less the same feelings, I think. We're quite silent here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing, actually. And uh, I think it, uh, we really need a safe space for this, uh, for not only self-exploration, but safe space to talk about all these. And I think today is a very good opportunity. Thank, thank you so much. 
Thanks a lot. Um, as you already touched a little bit, you know, in the situation where the system is oppressing us, talking about personal things is political things, right? It's, uh, it's a fight back mm -hmm. against those who oppress us in many ways. So thanks a lot for sharing. Uh, do we have any more questions, comments, feedback from the audience in Hong Kong or maybe people in, in Zoom? As Karen mentioned, there is only one English version at the moment in, in Hong Kong. So if you are interested, maybe you can learn Bahasa or maybe we can produce some more books, Karen. <laughs> yeah. And just just a question to Karen, I think you mentioned that you you are doing another project um, on on, on issues about gender equality and also sexuality. And I think I was just thinking, this is a very powerful tool and it can be applied um, to many other issues that are very close to our hearts. Um, I don't know, maybe from the experience of Hong Kong, but what's the context there? And maybe you can use this powerful tool to also help you in, in exploring those contexts to tell people what's going on and, and as, a, as a way to resist back, as a way to fight back, in addition to protests and many other powerful parts of the movement as well. Um, so there is a question from, <laughs> Ryan has another question. I think it's okay, right? Are we waiting for, okay. Uh, when you bring the method of photos voice to Indonesia, how do you adapt to Indonesian context. Okay. okay. Um, the the photo voice method. I think, uh, in my opinion, um, like before uh, I conducted this photo voice method, I believe like there are, there are many people also have done this photo voice method. But um, maybe they, they didn't realize that it calls for a voice uh, uh, to explore themselves, to speak up about something. Um, and maybe I, I don't know exactly like uh, like the actors uh, who has uh, have applied uh, this method, actually. Uh, but for for this photo voice, I learned um, when I uh, studied uh, Therapeutic photography. Uh, currently, I'm I'm studying about it uh, through Robert Green University. So, like this method have been like identified since um, one uh, 18th century, uh, but it has been it had been applied by the um, psychiatrist uh, who had photographs uh, his clients, and uh, the clients is a schizophrenic uh, patients. Uh, and the patients uh, just look up uh, theirs, uh, themselves on the pictures and they realize, so this is me. Uh, this is me who uh, have been like uh, seen by other people. So they got the awareness of uh, themselves uh, and they get insight, who am I actually? And um, how do I adapt it? Uh, in Indonesian context, hmm. I think it's quite difficult questions because uh, I conduct these workshops in the community that uh, also have the awareness on sexual reproductive health issues. But uh, it has to be like more uh, more people's uh, reached by the, this method actually. Um, yeah, I think that's all from me. I don't know uh, if I have like answers to your questions. <laughs> Maybe, Anfita, do you want to add something? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you also you are also using these tools to um into the context of disaster. Was that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, for a voice. Okay. After um like this uh this uh these two series. I also conducted uh, in people with disabilities, young people with disabilities in several cities in Indonesia. Um, so they also speak up about their difficulties uh, in sexual issues. 
and that's also interesting things because um, based on the data, like many like young peoples, uh, moreover, women in disabilities um, more uh, exposed to the uh, sexual uh, past violence. Uh, yeah. And this is one way to uh, speak up about, about uh, their, their problems. And also before that, uh, I applied this method uh, as a psychosocial assistance uh, to the teenagers uh, who were the victims of natural disasters. So it's part of like uh, counseling through photography. Yeah. Mm, okay. So just a question, Karen, of see if someone, for, for example, from our audience in Zoom or in, in Hong Kong would like to do this. Do they need someone like you <laughs> to accompany them along the way or they can do it themselves? Uh, actually, they can do it themselves, uh, especially for therapeutic photography, because in therapeutic photographies, we don't need like uh, counselors. But if you want to do the therapy through photography, uh, I think you need uh, like a psychologist uh, to uh, accompany you to explore uh, more about your, your problems because as we know like if you see the iceberg uh people can only see the top uh mm. of the sea but uh through this like therapeutic photography method we try to look uh what uh like under the sea uh, the problems the needs um yeah that's that's it all right yeah. so we have one more minute maybe i should give uh, you know, like uh, it's an um, opportunity for everyone who, you know, like every con uh, speakers here to give them uh, the closing remarks before we close the sessions. And maybe who wants to start first? Can I just point, <laughs> point in someone? <laughs> okay, I just would you like to share your closing remarks? Uh, okay, thank you. My closing remarks is just uh, living in Indonesia as a teenage is very, very tough. Uh, we can express our sexuality clearly and so freely. We can talk about sexuality to other people as much as we want to share, as much as we want to talk about what uh, in my, our mind, but in our head, we just have to shut your mouth and do nothing and just be quiet. It's hard to be, become a teenager in Indonesia. Uh, however, young people also have a voice. They have a role. They have freedom of expression. And my closure is sexuality should be discussed freely. And we just uh, about our title in the book, what we don't talk about when we talk about sexuality, it's just uh, what we talk about sexuality. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Ajis. Angi. It's a hard question. <laughs> But um, I would say that I love uh, I love all the part of my body, and I will keep uh, trying to be better and better, and I will keep loving my body because I'm a woman. <laughs> That's it. Thanks a lot, Angie. Doni, what's hello, Don? Hello, Ka. Closing remarks, pernyataan penutup. Hmm, thank you guys, thank you Kak Karon yang sudah banyak membantu kita berproses selama ini. Okay, thanks Karen for helping us. Karen, your turn. Okay, uh, yeah, um, for me like uh, intimate justice uh, encourage individuals to explore their personal relations as well as social conditions such as race and gender-based stereotypes. So yeah, to me, uh, intimate experiences 
uh, is the highest forms of one expressions, uh, including interpersonal uh, interpersonal relationships, desires, uh, emotional explorations, and to develop competencies that are not seldom against various social norms. So intimacy that extends beyond sex, but also emotional proximity and love that play important roles in determining, uh, in determining uh, a person's sexual satisfactions and expectations. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So thanks everyone for joining us in this conversations. I think the message is very clear that, you know, start from us and then we can spread what changes in us will always be contagious because, you know, we are all in this process together. Um, and, and I really hope that you are inspired with the, with the conversation and really would like to know more about this. Uh, I think maybe uh, the committee can give you, you know, Karen's context if you want to know more about Karen, maybe you can visit Kwe Ali Gallery to know more and maybe order books in Bahasa. And hopefully the English version will be also available soon. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Um, we really thank you and have a nice afternoon. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. Thank you so much.